How was your day at school, son? Dad, hold on. I'm trying to get to the next level. Dinner's ready. Coming, Mom. Here to take your daughter out. This cannot be happening. Awesome. We are going to have a great Mother's Day. Thanks for spending Mother's Day with Celebration Church moms. We want to start your day off right. We're continuing in our family or fam versus wild series. I want you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Exodus, Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. I'm going to begin reading in verse 9. And of course, we're doing all of our weekend messages out of our daily devotional readings. We've been in Exodus this month. Come on, are you a little impressed I was able to pull a family series out of the book of Exodus? Okay, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, However, there is so much about family in this book. And we'll get to that a a little bit later. But uh, Exodus... Chapter 24, I'm going to begin reading in verse 9. Of course, now this is after God has made the covenant with Israel, and now they're celebrating with a meal of the covenant. And in verse 9 it says, Then Moses went up also, then Moses went up also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and it was like the very heavens in its clarity. But on the nobles of the children of Israel he did not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate and drank. Can you imagine this family dinner right here? It's family dinner with God. And it goes on in verse 12, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you the tablets of stone and the law and the commandments which I have written, so that you may teach them. I want to talk to you today about uh, how important it is in spending time with our family. And I've entitled this message, Dinner with the Family. Dinner with the fam. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, just bless all the moms today, Lord. And and God, as we unpack your word for the next 25 minutes or so, give us a hungry heart, Lord, and help us understand how important spending time with one another is. Give us a hungry heart for your truth and your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. amen and amen. I'm sure we've all had some interesting family dinners, some good some not so good. How many of you are believing for a good family dinner on this Mother's Day or going out to eat and all that kind of stuff? You know, we've had some good ones. We've had some not so good ones. And today I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk about the dynamics of a family dinner per se, but I want to talk to you about what God instructs or teaches Moses about at this first family dinner here with the children of Israel. You know, uh, Carrie and I, I can remember when we were married, but before we had kids. Uh, and by the way, my wife is a fantastic cook. I don't mean to make some of you guys jealous or whatever, but I just want to honor both my wife and my mom on this Mother's Day. They are fantastic cooks. And so Carrie is a great cook, and she knew a lot about food. And when we were married, before we had our kids, she actually had a part-time job. She was like a restaurant uh, review person. And this website would pay Carrie, and she could bring one guest. (laughs) That was me. And it would actually pay her to go to these different restaurants around the Baton Rouge area. We were living in Louisiana at the time. You know, Louisiana has some great food, some great restaurants. They would pay us to go to these restaurants, and we would order off the menu, and Carrie would critique the food. I mean, you know, guys, that is a great job for your wife to have if she can... (laughs) land that job. So we would go to all these fancy restaurants, some Cajun, some kind of fancy, you know, just all different types. And, and what kind of always bothered me, uh, and, and I'm sure this, you've experienced this before, is we, we go to this restaurant and it's, and it's an expensive restaurant, so I'm like, oh man, look, I'm going to order this steak, or I'm going to, you know, order this, this big piece of chicken or whatever, and they talk to you about how great it is and how high quality is, and then they bring the food to you, and it's like this tiny pea 
peace. I mean, they talk about how incredible it was, you know, and they, this cow's only found in the northern mountains of Japan, and you know, all these, and, it just, and then they, they, they finally bring you the dish, and you're like, what's up with that? And I'm sure if you think about it, and maybe something like that's happened to you. But you know, if someone does that to you, if you pay this money and you get this nice piece of meat and then they bring you the meat and you're like, well, man, this is great, but it, you know, it's only like two inches. And they said to you, yeah, I know this is a really small piece of meat, but you don't understand this is super high quality. I mean, this meat, it's got this magical, it's got this high level quality. It, it is such high quality. You're going to really enjoy it. Listen, I don't care how high quality the meat is. Come on, I need a steak here. I need more than two or three bites. There's no magical quality of anything that I can just take two or three bites of and feel satisfied. In other words, I need some quantity, not just some quality. Guys, that's why I'm a porterhouse man, just by the way, if you ever are going to give me a gift certificate. You know what I'm saying? Just give me. <laughs> Father's Day is right around the corner. <laughs> this is why. This is my philosophy on the porterhouse steak, okay? Just bring me the biggest steak. It's going to have some fat. It's going to be overcooked here, maybe undercooked here, but it's so much steak, eventually I'm going to find a portion that is high quality. And this is what, God, we find this family dinner here. This is a fascinating story here in the book of Exodus where God's actually having this family dinner and he's going to teach Moses a lesson about this quality, quantity issue here during this family dinner. Now, just a few things about this. You know, it talks about that 70 people uh, went up to this dinner. This is the first time where God is called uh, the God of Israel. Now, before that, a couple of times, he was called the Lord God of Israel, but it's very interesting in this very powerful, intimate setting here, having dinner with God, he's entitled, they take the Lord off and they call him the God of Israel. It's, it's more relational. And here there's 70 elders and of course uh, Moses and Nadab and Abihu. 70, it just represents, you know, God couldn't have dinner with all two million of the Israelites, so it's just a representation of that, but this is actually, I mean, God is coming down. They don't see God face to face. We know from John 1, 18 that no one has ever seen Father God face to face except Jesus. But if you study in Isaiah chapter five and in other chapters, Exodus 33 here, you understand that they saw the form of God, that he was in the form, this fire and, 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 and the clouds and the different things that were around God, and they actually had this dinner with God. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine calling your kids, uh, hey, Stoby, Kaylin, Annabelle, come on in. We're, we're having dinner with God tonight. I bet they were on their best behavior. How many of you know the table manners were impeccable <laughs> with these people? I mean, what do you do when you pass the salt when God's there? Do you like, like, what do you do? Do you feel like, you kind of like, you know, try to throw in some worship. Like, oh God, you are so awesome. I love you. I worship you, Lord. You are the greatest. Could you pass the salt? <laughs> now, I don't think God, scholars agree, God, I don't think God was actually eating with them, but they were eating around this table with the presence of God actually there. And of course, this is a beautiful type and shadow of one day we will all actually have a dinner with the full revelation of the glory of God in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Where we will, because we have resurrected, glorified bodies, we will finally be able to look upon the face of Father God and not be consumed. That's why you need a resurrected body. That's why flesh and blood cannot inherit uh, the kingdom of God. Because right now, if we saw God in our fleshly bodies, we would just, huh, we just die. We can't take it. But one day we'll have a resurrected body where we can experience the glory of God and look at Father God face to face. Come on, can you give me my hand for that? 
So this is an incredible dinner. Remember, like God, they've just cut the covenant. And just to give you a little bit of review from last week. Remember this, that God, he's, he's taken this factious throng, this wild uh, people of Israel who were polytheists. They worshiped multiple gods. They were idol worshipers. They had no organization or societal structure. They had been slaves for 400 years. They were dominated. They were illiterate. He took uh, this wild mob of people basically into the wild, out here into the wilderness to make them not only a nation, but a family and a cohesive fighting force. And he's going to show them how they can not just survive, but thrive out here in the wilderness. And it's the same thing for your family. When you come into a covenant with Jesus Christ, you and your household, God wants to make you into a cohesive fighting force. So in these wild times that we live in, you cannot just survive, but you can thrive. And you can eventually come in what they call the promised land or what is the place of more than enough. Enough. 